be the first one in and the last one out. I had um, an executive tell me that when I was a freshman um, in, in college, and I that stuck me. Hey, everyone. This is Professor Sesh, the podcast, and I'm your host, Sophia Welch. Every week, Professor Sesh is presenting conversations with smart, successful, no BS music industry professionals, all with the goal of helping new artists and those who support them build their creative careers with great advice, stories, tips, and insights. For today's episode, I spoke with Cameron Capers, the co-founder of Black Wax, which is a talent management company and a record label. Uh, their roster includes artists like Ari Lennox, They, Toyin, Layla Blue, and uh, producers as well, Russ Chell, Epic Pro, and Trell Got Wings. Um, Cameron got his start in the music industry at 18, working for Beyonce's longtime publicist at Parkwood Entertainment. And from there, he worked his way up uh, to being a project manager before leaving to start Black Wax in 2020. If you are looking for a manager or if you want to be a manager, this is the conversation for you. Cam brings to the table ideas that are going to move your thinking forward, uh, specifically in regards to taking career chances, when to take a chance and why. So check it out. All right, so you went to NYU, which we have we have a ton of people that went to NYU, and you may, you went to Gallatin, right? Yep. So I designed my own major. Yep, and my That's major boring. was pretty boring <laughs> compared to some friends. Um, yeah. So the main I made I did global marketing strategy and development. My argument was that you know people like Marx who would say that your environment um, affects your affects your pr- perception actually right and we could use that uh, for marketing i was like why not try to learn something different that could also help my um my music industry so your resume is like insane you interned at uh, where did you not intern universal music sony warner all in a and r and so i assume this is all in college so did you know that you wanted to be a manager like already at that point i didn't know i wanted to be a manager i kind of fell into it so I mean, should I just give my life story on how I started doing management? Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. So, so yeah. So I'm from Atlanta. I grew up uh, playing instruments and I went to an arts magnet school. I really sucked at music, but I eventually just practiced and got good at that and like learned piano as well and, and started producing and bringing together all of like the musicians of the school or singers and just making records with them and set up studio from like, you know, the money I would make during the summer and would buy studio equipment and just set it up at my house and figured once I got to NYU that it wasn't really that I liked producing music. It was that I liked bringing people together and connecting them. It took me, took me a while to kind of figure that out like my sophomore year, but I was still kind of interning. I was a college market marketing rep at Sony, which like my freshman year I applied and, somehow miraculous, miraculously got it and um, fell into an internship at Parkwood Entertainment my freshman year as well. And um, I was, the way it happened, I was extremely early for a class that was a little far from like the central, if you want to call it campus of NYU. And uh, my professor, Lauren Davis, and she was like, oh, oh my God, you're, you're so nice. You have some good experience. You should like, have you ever heard of Parkwood Entertainment? And I was like, no, I really... And um, I, I obviously knew who Beyonce was. And um, I mean, I, I really respected her. She's like, well, you should, they're looking for a publicity intern. You should try to get into it. And I was like, I don't know. I just got this Sony Music College marketing gig. Not sure if I should put that on my plate with um, being a freshman at NYU. And um, something told me when I went home to just send my cover letter and my resume and uh, Two days later, my professor called me. She was like, they want you to start Monday. From there, it was just, just grinding. But I would be doing her, you know, an internship at Parkwood while also doing the Sony Music College marketing gig. So I would go to shows at night and kind of review them for the different labels and like put up posters around the school. And, and then I would also a lot of times be doing like a, a third internship. So I would be doing Parkwood three times a week and then like maybe like UMPG or Warner Chapel twice a week and doing this only music stuff at, at night. It got to a point where I found, I found this, this artist who hasn't put out music and me and some friends from NYU were able to get him a deal with Capital um, that ended up 
falling through, but it's so, so wait, I kind of connect the dots. I can be a manager. Why don't I try this? I took a semester off from doing Parkwood or any internships. By the time I graduated, I, I knew I wanted to do management because I was already managing like on the side. I became uh, our general manager's like project manager um, when I graduated. So I was working on a lot of what she would call like special projects. So whether that was Ivy Park or um, Watermelon Water or, you know, having to go on tour and do certain things with Beyonce or Chloe and Holly, that, that was kind of my, you know, that, that was like my stomping grounds. I got to see kind of management, like a management company at like, I guess the highest of the highs, right? And it got to a point where I had, you know, been able to travel the world. I'd been able to learn everything from like everyone at the company and they're all just still like family. And um, it got to a point where I was, I was also doing my deals with and building my own management company with producers and they were getting these hit records. And, um, and I had um, like real money coming in where I could form an own, my own company. It felt like uh, I was like, okay, I've been able to, Beyonce has been able over the last 20, 25 years. And I, I tell everybody this, I use this analogy. She has this vehicle that has such a solid foundation, right? Um, and if one screw falls out, it doesn't even matter. Her career is still going a million miles per hour. She built such a crazy foundation that so artists, you know, really built for themselves because they rushed the process. And um, I wanted to build that vehicle for like the next generation of artists and producers and songwriters. So two days after my 25th birthday in 2019, I gave my notice and I left and I was like, you know, I'm, I just want to build my company. I have of my producers and a few bubbling artists. Let me just see what I can do. That same week, I went to um, one of my really uh, good friends birthday dinner and my friend, Justin Lamott, who I had known since college came up to me. And we always talked about working together. He was like, we, man, what are we doing? What are we doing? We, we have to do something together. I was like, well, you know, I just left my job a few days ago and he was like oh let's do it let's form let's form this company it's time it's like perfect time it was like meant to be we came together and um we officially like launched the company in 2020 and uh, it's a small staff of about six people and wow. um we have ari and a few other artists and some great producers and that's that yeah that's that's I mean, a bit it's of a, my story. I left some details out, but that's a lot. No, it's <laughs> it's amazing. Your first, you made your first deal while you were still in college. It's like unreal. You've we've got a lot. Okay, so we've got a lot to unpack. I want to go um, back to the internship of it all, and as you're sort of rising up the ranks and you're at these companies, and it sounds like people keep on really responding to you, and you, you're getting handed responsibilities. What would you say, because we have a lot of listeners that want to be managers, what would you say you were really doing right that people were paying attention to you, giving you those responsibilities? What were the qualities that you were showing them that you could be trusted? The first one in and the last one out. I had um, an executive tell me that when I was a freshman um, in, in college, and I, that stuck me. A big, a big part of it, too, is just really keeping those connections with those people, right? Like not just letting, it's not just an, an internship, right? Like really just building those relationships um, because who knows, like it might be somebody you interned for 10 years ago you pro or five years ago, you're probably going to see them again if you stay in the music industry. So I would say first one in, last one out, be super organized. Like any, nothing is too small of a task, right? Like there was a point where um, when I was doing all my internships and I was like, the only intern at Parkwood at one point. And I would just, it didn't matter if it was my boss or not. When somebody asked me to do something, I would just make sure I got it done. Would you say that it sort of is like this just kind of fire inside you that you can't really name that would, that made you be that person of like, okay, I've got to get it done. Cause a lot of people understand first one in last one out, but then they burn out and they're just kind of like, oh, I've done, I've done the nine to five, like that, that lasts for like a week, you know? I get the burning out um, process, but I think also just passionate about music. Yeah. Really passionate about what I was doing and what I was working on. And, um, had uh i don't know you have to have 
this kind of insane belief in yourself, right? That like I even till this day, every day waking up, I still have to have because you have to not only work hard, but get very lucky to be anybody in this industry, right? It's subjective things it is, right? In most careers, if you do your best work, you put your best foot forward, you're going to get a great result, right? In the music industry, you can put your best foot forward. You can find that's, you know, the most incredible thing you ever heard but it may not necessarily connect, right? Because it's subjective and it's really up to the people to decide. Um, but you got, you had, you just have to have the same belief to just keep going. Then you could have a number one record the next day, you know, you could have no clients at all or something. Yeah. Would you, would you recommend that students who want a career in the industry work at the majors, like at the outset, or is there, there's a lot of different paths. And I think it's good to know, especially if you want to be a manager, how it works on the side. Granted, I've never been a full-time employee at a major label, um, but like interning at different labels and publishers kind of show me uh, how, how things worked on the inside. Like when I was interning at a Universal Music Publishing Group, um, Jessica Rivera at the time, who was running the New York office, made sure that one, you know every day I was there, I was interning for a few different people in... Um, in the, in the office. So I learned this department, I learned the admin department, I learned uh, legal and business affairs and um, registration and, and of course a and and all of those things. So I learned every facet of what publishing really is. Internships like that helped me as a manager, you know, have, have real meetings and, and communicate with publishers and a and and marketing people and agents effectively. That's interesting. It sort of is like you were taking that, like you were doing that kind of freshman year, like required courses in every single area of the music industry. Yeah. 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 Y- Yvette at Parkwood, she told me, she was like, I think you should try everything and figure out what you really like and what you really hate. And that's, that's what I did. Um, I mean, there were some things where I was like, yeah, I can never do this as a career, <laughs> but um, then I fell into management. It was like, okay, I get to do a little bit of everything and meet everybody. And um, I love, you know, connecting people, making deals happen. Um, but I also like really care for creatives. I want to sort of unpack that because I think caring about the artist as a human being is probably something that makes you very good at your job and makes for a good manager. What would you say are the more strategic things that you've done that have helped your artists to succeed? Between myself and, and everybody else at Black Wax, when, um, when we're putting a plan together, it's like, it's a real plan. It's not just a um, one and, you know, one and done, like, oh, let's figure out how to like go grab the bag, right? It's more like, okay, what can really give you longevity, whether it's as an artist or a producer. For me, like every album is a different era of an artist, right? Or for a producer, like every producer has their different, their different era. So for example, with um, one of, one of uh, the producers I manage, Russ Chow, when we came together, uh, and this was 2018, um, we, we had a real plan, like, he was working with Take a Day Trip, who are now an incredible, you know, number one multi-platinum Grammy award winning producers. Um, and he's like, all right, we're going to let's continue to work with Day Trip and, and, and build our connections this way. And he still works with them to this day. And they're like family to us. And eventually he wanted to break into pop music as well. So we figured out a plan for that. All right. Here are the steps we need to take. OK, you you have your day deal with Warner Chapel. Let's, let's figure out a way for you to work with somebody like Justin Tranner, right? Um, I had a meeting with Jake Ottman, who I interned for at Warner Chapel, and we were catching up. And he was like, I might sign this girl. She's like a YouTube YouTuber, and she dances and stuff like that. And her name's Tate McCrane. I was like, oh, well, I have a producer who's looking to get into pop music. And um, he started working with her before she was signed. And he built that relationship with her to where he's still working with her to this day. So had like a real plan and real objectives and um, executing that. You just got to be, you got to have a real vision and, and, and um, be very uh, purposeful about it. I will find, um, think that coming into the industry, you can just have a checklist, right? 
And if you get everything done on the checklist, things will go well, but like we're perfect, right? And um, for us, that was super important for like all our clients and, you know, even everything that Justin has done with Ari before Black Wax, he moved with a purpose and she moved with a purpose. So, um, yeah. And we have a lot of listeners that are college artists looking for managers. I think nowadays artists almost have to be their own managers first. And I know all the artists hearing that hate to hear that, but (laughs) that's a real thing. And I think it will make you a boss. And when you have a manager, you will, you will know, um, exactly what to look for. You shouldn't have a manager until you absolutely need one until it gets to the point where you have these inquiries coming in and you're like, I cannot balance this and the creative at the same time. Right. Hold on to that personal touch as long as you can. Yeah. Until you're like, I literally yeah. do not have time to write this email. You represent producers. I'm wondering how that's different from managing an artist. Like with an artist, someone can hear, oh, that person has a great voice. But producer, I think that's a different skill to um, recognize that a producer is talented. So I'm wondering how you go about that. What matters the most when it comes to producers, clearly they have to be talented, right? And, and I, I don't know, I kind of just have a gauge based on like, either being in the studio with them or hearing the production that they do or having conversations about their influences or their workflow. Um, But they also have to be like really like in the studio with a lot of people, right? And like make their rounds because there's no manager or no publisher that's going to make all of those connections for you. Like every now and then, of course, like you're filling up um, their schedules and everything, but the producer has to show up. Not only... Um, in a creative way, but like make those connections themselves. I, I like for the people that are normally, I like for us to feature people that are like normally behind the scenes because it's like, you know, those are the people that are really making shit happen. So yeah, nice. yeah, no, this is, this is good. This is really good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Okay. Sophia. Talk All to right. You later. Hey everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Be sure to follow Quadio on Instagram and YouTube for more episodes and a lot more content just like this, all for young creatives. Um, Also, be sure to follow our guests at the links in the description, and we will see you next time.